Hey guys, welcome to The Quad Method. My name is Steven, and today we're going to be talking about music notation for quads. I know up till now we've been talking a lot about uh, intermediate concepts for intermediate quad players, so we're going to start delving into some beginner concepts for those of you that are just starting out on quads. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we're going to start talking about which drums are on which notes. So as you can see here, we have a six drum setup. Um, but a lot of quads out there are only five drums, which is fine, which in which case you would only be using one of these two right here. So at the very top, the very highest note, we have our spike. Some people call it spick and spock, but I like to call it spike. And that refers to this drum right here. Our next drum is the spock. Some people call it spook. And that refers to this drum right here. On a lot of quads, uh, the, this drum is actually going to be a little bit bigger on this than this drum. This is a six inch, but a lot of Spocks are eight inch, which is a couple inches bigger than, than this drum. But on others, it's they're the same size. They just sound a little bit different. Just know that this drum is gonna sound higher than this drum. And then we got our main drums, which is what makes quads quads. We have our drums one, two, three, and four. Our drum one is this drum right here. Our drum two is this drum right here. Our drum three is over here and our drum four is over here. And as you could probably guess, based on the music notation, the tones of the drums goes down based on uh, the number. So drum one is the highest out of the four, drum two is the next highest, and then drum three, and then drum four is the lowest. And I know it might be weird to kind of read the, read the notes like this, but then when you play the drums, it's not across, it's not one, two, three, four, it's one, two, three, four. This, this, the way this is set up makes sense. You can go down and up the drums really easily and it makes it just makes sense um, when you're playing and you'll figure out why as you get more into quads. Over here we've got some uh, rim notations. These are just simple X's. Typically you'll only see these on drums three and four. Drums three, sometimes it's written on the drum uh, note like such and sometimes it's written a uh, one below and same thing with drum four. It's, it kind of depends. Uh, I know it's preference. Some people, I'm sure, put it up here. But typically, I've only ever seen drums, uh, drum three rims written over here. And same with drum fours. You will see drum uh, drum two and one rims sometimes. Usually, you see these in like uh, standstill performance music. And typically, not on marching music because it's, it's not practical. And then over here, we have our shots. These are the bold X's. Make sure you don't get these two confused. I, I know people get these confused sometimes, but or the shots are bold X's while the rims are not. And maybe that is why some people put them on the line so that people don't get confused between rims and shots. But you'll see shots on any drums all the way up to Spike and Spock, all the way down to drums three and four. And then we have our Spanks and our Skanks. Um, I don't know who came up with the names, but that's just what it is. Uh, I call them spanks, and if you don't know what a spank is, it's basically where you play a shot and then you muffle it with you, the opposite hand right right after. Um, so it's basically just a, a, a very short shot. And then we get into crossovers, which, uh, as it turns out, there's a lot of different ways to write crossovers. And here we have the three that I have ever come across. I'm not sure if there's others, um, but if there are, you know, I'm sure they're easy to identify. But basically how you read this is, for if you see an open note like this, or a plus or a parentheses around a note, basically that is the hand that is on top of uh, the other hand. So in this case, we have a drum two cross over with the right hand. And what that means is that the drum one, or the left hand stick is gonna be on drum one or drum three, and the right hand is gonna be on top playing on drum two. And that goes for any drum, uh, whether you see it on drum one, two, three, or four, and it could be with the right or left hand. And that all those things apply to the open note version, the plus version, and the parentheses version. For double, uh, double stops, or uh, crossover double stops, um, I know it can be a little confusing sometimes when you're reading crossovers, but that's why I prefer the open note version because this is pretty easy to, to read. So if you see this... Um, regardless of what this says, the note that's open is the hand that's on top. So if you see uh, this type of crossover, that means your left hand will be on drum one and your right hand will be on top playing on drum two and you're going to play a double stop just like that. And that same rule applies for the parentheses. So that, as you can see, the parentheses are on drum two. And if the parentheses or the open note were on drum one, then you would it would be the opposite where the left hand would be on top playing on drum one. And sometimes you got to use context clues to help you out, but usually common sense kind of tells you which one is on top, which one's on bottom. 
As for the one with the plus, um, I don't know exactly how other people define it, but as I have seen it, if you see a plus on top, the hand that's written is going to be the one that's on top. So in this case, you have a drum one, two crossover. There's a plus, so that means there is a crossover. And then you see a right hand written down here, which means the right hand is going to be on top. Otherwise, the right hand will be on drum two. The left hand will be under on drum one, just like the other two. So all of these three are, are the same exact thing written differently. So I want to throw a couple examples at you. These don't have stickings. And this is one of these are a couple very common phrases where you have to use context clues uh, to kind of help you out, to help you figure out you know, where the crossovers are and what the sticking is. So usually when there's no sticking written, it usually means natural sticking, which means right, left, right, left. And that's what natural sticking means. So in this case, you have, um, you're going from drum one, all, uh, most of the notes on drum two, one, two, two, four, two, two, and then you got a crossover. And just because of natural sticking, that crossover is going to be with your right hand on drum four, one, four, four, four. And here are a couple other examples of just some rounds. Uh, when you play quads more often, you're gonna be you're gonna see stuff like this, which is basically just across the drum, right to left, where you're going uh, three one one two two four four four, and that's just going this way. Um, and then if you see this guy, that just means you're going across the drums the other way. So as you see these more often and you play more of them, uh, you'll you'll get used to them. And then in future musics, when you see quad music written like this you'll automatically know like oh that's what it is and sometimes you'll even see diddles or flams written on top of these and then by then you'll already know exactly what the arounds are and that's how you get good at sight reading is recognizing the rhythm recognizing the vocabulary and then recognizing the around patterns and here's another one um, if you see the notes going down tonally uh, some I, I call these I call this down the drum. I don't know if other people do, but I call it down the drum. And then if it goes the other way, where it's four, three, two, one, I call it up the drums. Um, but that's tonal. So in this case, the arounds aren't going to be in one direction. You're going to be switching off one, two, three, four. But tonally, it, it sounds exactly as it looks like this. Cool. Well, I hope that helps you guys. Um, those are the basic notations for quad music. I think I covered everything. I, there might be some special cases in there. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. Uh, if there's a specific piece of notation that you want us to answer, go ahead and message us on Instagram or Facebook and we'll try to help you out with that. So um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.